warm welcome to all. I am Captain Dr. Anthony Amalaji Sili, Assistant Professor in Zoology and Associate NCC Officer of Fatima College, Madurai. On the onset, I thank Lieutenant Dr. Kalayarasi, ANO of APAC Palani, for giving this opportunity of presenting my module on NCC. Now getting on to the module, TSC theory. According to the Red Book of NCC, the syllabus for TSC girls and boys are the same. In this module, I will be dealing with the health and hygiene, FCBC, obstacle course and weapon training. Firstly, moving on to health and hygiene, we will learn about the human body. The skeletal system is formed of the bones, the different types of bones. They are spongy bone, compact bone, and based on their structure, they vary from one another. They can be classified as long bones, short bones, flat bones, irregular bones, and sesamoid bones. The main function of the skeletal system is to give shape and firmness to the body, provide attachment for the muscles, helps in movement, and protects the vital structures like the heart, lungs, and the brain. The RBC are produced in the bone marrow. Moving on to the muscular system, these muscular tissues are being formed of special cells which has the ability to shorten and contract in order to produce the movements of the various parts of the body. They are voluntary skeletal muscles, involuntary smooth muscles and cardiac muscles found in the heart. Moving on to the circulatory system, it consists of the heart, blood vessels and the blood. The main function of the heart is to pump blood throughout the body which helps to distribute oxygen, nutrients to various tissues and also to collect the waste products from different parts of the body. The heart, it is located in the thorax between the lungs. The blood is also known as the transport system. It consists of hemoglobin, RBC, WBC and the platelets. The blood vessels are of three types, the arteries, capillaries and the veins. Moving on to the respiratory system, the lungs are the main organs of respiratory system. They are responsible for the exchange of oxygen and carbon dioxide. Digestive system starts with the mouth moves to the salivary glands in the mouth, pharynx, esophagus, stomach, liver, small intestine, and then the large intestine. As we know, digestion, it is a mechanical and chemical process by which the complex food that we consume are converted into simple substances so that they can be easily absorbed by the blood and utilized by the various tissues of the body. Excretory system. It is a process by which the waste products are removed out of the body. The excretory organs are the skin, lungs, kidney and the gastrointestinal tract. The skin covers the external surface of the body. It removes the waste in the form of sweat. The urinary system, it is formed of the kidney, ureter, urinary bladders, and the urethra. It excretes the urine. The nervous system comprises of the central nervous system, peripheral nervous system, and the autonomic nervous system. The central nervous system is formed of the brain and the spinal cord. The perif peripheral nervous system connects the central nervous system with various organs and the muscles while the autonomic nervous system controls the various internal organs. Neuron is the functional unit of the nervous system. Next, moving on to hygiene and sanitation. Hygiene refers to the cleanliness of an individual, 
Sanitation refers to the cleanliness of one's environment. We are studying mainly health and hygiene and sanitation in order to prevent disease, to promote health, thereby to prolong life. Personal hygiene. We must take care of our body. We should have good habits and the healthy outlook. This helps to keep us free from diseases. So the various components are cleanliness of the skin, hair and body. This should be regularly washed by taking bath regularly. We must sleep also regularly, taking rest for the body and the mind. We should have at least 7 to 8 hours of sleep. Our heating habits should also be good. We should eat properly foods, eat slowly, chew well and drink plenty of fluids. Besides that, we should also exercise regularly keep us, to keep ourselves healthy. To have mental heart outlook, it should be also healthy. We should be optimistic, cheerful and take adequate interest in the surrounding and in other persons so that we can have the appropriate emotional response and be able to adjust with each other in the society. Water. Water is every day, everywhere and it is the need. It should be free from harmful organisms and chemical substances. It should be acceptable to taste and appearance. There are different sources of water. They are the rain water, surface water and underground water. There are impurities found in the water like dissolved impurities and suspended impurities like various organic and inorganic substances which may cause hazards or diseases in the population like jaundice, polio, gastroenteritis, cholera, typhoid, etc. And chemical pollutants may cause heavy metal poisoning. Hence, we need to purify water to get rid of the contaminants. Water can be purified in these following ways by boiling and filtering, clarification, sterilization, thinking and precipitation. On large scale, water can be stored in the water bodies and they can be filtered using the slow and rapid sand filters and chlorinated and then it can be given to the population to consume. Moving on to the food hygiene, we have to check the hygiene for the potential source of infection, how it is reaching the consumer and how we can prevent meat and fish which we buy from the market it should be fresh it should be pinkish deep purple and elastic to touch it should not have gone the post-mortem stages if it has gone it will give an odor that is not proper for us egg that we consume it should be fresh, free from contamination with fecal matter. It should be properly washed. The vegetables should also be free from contamination. Hence, before consuming, we should wash the vegetables and consume. The area where we eat, that is the eating places and the people involved with the food handling should be made to check themselves medically on regular basis. They should be washing their hands and trimming their nails, covering their hair, wearing uh, and not coughing and sneezing during their cooking. The places where we eat should be adequate, should have adequate lighting. Sanitation. It refers to the cleanliness of the environment where, live, where we live. It 
gets contaminated with the different types of waste. The different types of waste are human excreta, stable litter, dry refuse and garbage, liquid waste and dead animals and carcasses left on streets. This, these are the various sources of refuse. This must be collected and removed from the environment. While disposing, it should be filled in areas where there are pits. It can be controlled by controlling tipping or the sanitary landfills. The hospital refuse, it can be best disposed of by incineration. The other common method that can be used is composting. That is by digging a hole on the ground and placing all the waste inside and closing it. We can also use vermi composting process here. Disposal of sewage. It is of utmost importance now. This treatment is mainly brought about by the action of anaerobic and aerobic bacteria. This process involves the screening, chambering, primary sedimentation, where the wastes are being removed from the water, tripping filter, activated sludge process, and disposal of the effluent. In some areas, the sewage is drained into the sea or the river or it has been treated and reused again. We can also use the sewage water in the oxidation pond wherein the waste as well as the bacterial biodegradation can be allowed to carry on and therefore the water can be reused again. Moving on to infectious and contagious disease and their prevention. Disease. These spread from one person to another. It can be from man to man, animal to man, or from air, dust, or soil. Hence, it can be classified into six types. Excremental diseases, droplet infection, contact diseases, insect-borne diseases, water-borne diseases, and animal-borne diseases. Excremental diseases is through excreta contamination with the food. It may cause typhus, dysentery, diarrhea, jaundice, and intestinal worms. Droplet infection, it can be spread from the nose, throat, or lungs in the air while we cough or sneeze or even while talking. Examples are common cold, influenza, diphtheria, and meningitis. Contact diseases, it can be by direct contact or indirect contact. Direct contact is touching one another. Indirect contact is touching the substances, materials used by the infected persons. Insect bond diseases, certain diseases are caused by insects where the insects act as carrier, carrier. Say for example, mosquitoes can spread malaria, dengue and filaria. And flies, they can spread diarrhea, dysentery, cholera and typhoid. Waterborne diseases, these are spread through water. Example, cholera, dysentery, diarrhea and jaundice. All sources of this disease has to be eliminated. Animal bond diseases, example, rabies, plague, anthrax, and tuberculosis, where the animals act as the agency of spreading diseases. This can be prevented by avoiding the water that we get. That is, it should be properly boiled and then it should be consumed. We should clean our hands with a hand-based sanitizer or the soap and water regularly. Once we have infection, we should have wear the mask and while we go out. To prevent the contact diseases, we should avoid direct contact with the people who have the infection. And proper diagnosis will help in spreading the disease. 
Insect borne diseases can be prevented by leveling and uh, leveling the area of the breeding places of mosquitoes or there should not be any water clogged areas nearby. Use of kerosene oil or the fuel oil can be done to prevent the growth of the mosquito larvae. Moving on to the next subject, field craft and battlecraft, commonly called as FCBC. It is an art of using the ground and the weapon that is available to the best of one's advantage. So this includes the description of land, observation and concealment, this judging distance, recognition and description of targets, movement with and without arms. While judging the ground, a soldier is not normally required to open fire at ranges over 100 yards. He must first know when to open fire, can indicate targets, can pass information accurately when acting as an observer. To describe a ground, there are four different ways. That is a foreground that is up to 300 yards, middle distance from 300 to 500 yards, and far distance beyond 500 yards. There are different types of grounds. Broken ground, open and flat ground, high ground and dead grounds. Broken ground is uneven, that is interrupted with nalas, and it is suitable for move of infantry and hinders observation of activities. Flat ground, it should have little cover of bushes, hedges, and it is not suitable for move of the infantry by day. High ground, this ground is far above the general level of the area. Dead ground, that is hidden from the observer's view. There are different methods of judging the distance. They are the unit of measure, appearance method, section average, key ranges, halving and bracketing. The unit of measure is also termed as 100 yards method. Here, one should have a good idea of 100 yards distance on the ground. Appearance method the distance can be judged by noting the detailed appearance of man at various stages. Say for example, at 200 yards, all the parts of the body are distinct. While at 400 yards, the body shape alone can be seen. The face of the individual is not distinguished. While at 600 yards, the hand appears as a dot and the details are not visible. The third method, section average. Here, each person in the group is asked to judge the distance and the average of this distance is taken into account. The fourth one, key range method. Here, the range of certain object known is taken as a key and from there, it is being judged, halfing. An object is selected halfway between the observer and the target. The distance of this selected object is judged. Then it is doubled to get the distance of the target. The last method is of bracketing. Factors which make things visible. There are six S and one M. Shape, shadow, silhouette, surface, spacing, movement and shine. These are the six factors which helps to make an object visible. Camouflage and concealment. The real test of field craft is the soldier's ability to kill the enemy without getting himself killed. So concealment is the use of artificial or the natural aids that is avail available in the battlefield to mystify and de deceive the enemy and defeat his observation. Successful achievement can be 
can be obtained only on the correct use of the natural cover and skillful use of the artificial aids available. These are some of the correct use of cover. The skyline is considered to be the worst background as anyone can spot you if you move here and there. An isolated cover is also dangerous because it would attract attention of the enemy and can be easily indicated in a fire order. A rough, dark and irregular background which matches your clothing provides considerable cover from view. Field signals. These are the various signals used by the commander or certain other members of the subunits to convey a message to the others. The hand, the weapon or both together along with a whistle can also be used to give signals to his men. These are signals to be given with the hand. Say for example, to deploy the right arm is fully extended above the head and waved from side to side with the palm open. Signals are also given with the weapons. Signals are also given with the whistles, the cautionary blast, alarm blast, the enemy aircraft is approaching. This has been indicated by succession of short blasts. Hence, the field signals are a must for all the trainees as this would help one and all during the camps, army attachments and on various other occasions. Moving on to the section formations. This has been adopted by the troops during their moment. At the section level, approximately a body of 10 men, various formations are being adopted. The factors which influence the section formation are the ground, the task, the type and the direction of the enemy fire, the need for security and control of the section, necessity of reducing the maximum fire with minimum delay. The different types of section formation are single file, diamond, arrow shaped, spearhead and extended line. Next is obstacle training. The main aim of the obstacle training is to instill self-confidence and generate team spirit in the cadets. This is of utmost importance to NCC cadet as it infuses courage, patience in them and makes them physically fit. Initially training is given to the cadets in the PT dress and later on with the packs and weapons. The obstacle course consists of the straight balance where the cadet has to walk on the obstacle and balance himself. Second, clear jump. Third, zigzag balance, high ball and double ditch. This high wall and double ditch is mainly meant only for the SD cadets. It is not for SW. The right vault and the left vault these are wooden structures where the cadet has to jump over the obstacle using the right or the left hand as support on the beam. The ramp followed by the gate vault are the various components of obstacles. Moving on to weapon training. For NCC cadets, 0.22 rifle is being used. There are two terminologies that are being associated with weapon training. That is MPI, the mean point of impact and the grouping capacity. The central point of the area covered by the group of rounds that has been fired by the cadet 
with consistent aim and held at the same aiming mark is called MPI or the mean point of impact. The diameter of a circle containing all five shots fired by a man to the best of his ability is known as the grouping capacity. Moving on to the different parts of the rifle, they are the butt, the bolt, the chamber, this is the barrel and here you can see the four sides and here the bayonet base can also be at attached. These are the major characteristic features of 0.22 rifle. They have a weight of about 8 lbs. The maximum capacity is 10 rounds or 5 rounds. The muscle velocity is 2700 per second. There are 6 grooves in the barrel. The effective range is 25 yards. The maximum range is 1700 yards. The rate of fire at normal is 5 rounds per minute. The various targets that are being used with 0.22 rifle is for application firing 1 into 1 target is being used. The main aim is to take the bullets at the bull which is black in the center. For grouping two, one into one target is being used where the white patch is the center of the bull. For rapid firing, six inches figure target is being used. The aim is taken at the center of the pitch figure. There are three different positions for firing. One is standing, kneeling and the lying position. The line position is considered to be the good position for NCC cadets. Here, the legs are to be placed, opened apart, slant, and the body slanting to the left from the line of target. There are two triangles being formed. That is, one is between the arms and the, and the body. The vertical triangle is viewed from the front of the firer of its two sides that is being formed by the forearms, the base being the ground between the elbows. In addition, as a quick check, the shoulders should be in level. While firing a shot, the sequence of action is aiming position, breathing. This breathing has to be controlled and then fired and then it should be followed through. The normal procedure for firing in the ranges is the NCC cadets will be brought to the firing point and made them to stay about 100 yards and practices will be given and the movements what they may have to make will be explained to them. Then the fires will be detailed to the targets. The coaches, the ammunition party and the lookout men will take up their position. The first two details only will follow up behind the targets. Once the order is given, the first detail will take its position. The firing will start after getting the orders from the officer in charge. On completion of firing, the firers must raise, raise their right hand, keeping the elbow on the ground. The officer will give the word of command as Kali Kar. On this, the firers will take their rifle onto their shoulders and move the bolt twice, press the trigger and stand up. Then, detailed report will be given. Number A rifle teak, do teak, teen teak, char teak, depending on the number of carrots detailed. Then the details are changed by the word of command and the new detail will be coming and following the same procedure. So before the fires leave the range, they will have to further do weapon inspection. Here each fire will be asked if she is having any live ammunition. 
then it, should, it will be ensured that nobody is having a life emanation and they will leave the firing points. There are certain laws of aiming. It is the target has to be focused while firing so that a clear picture is formed on the retina of the eye and get the center of the target. Then the rifle must be held properly and keep it upright. Close the left eye and then you have to focus on the foresight. The foresight should be seen through the black side. The foresight should be seen in the center of you. The tip of the foresight will be aligned in the center as you can see here in this picture. So it will be set. So once you have focused, you have to hold your breath and fire. So this is all for the day. Thank you. Thank you for the opportunity given. Thank you one and all.